What's happening, YouTube? Jonathan Pariente, The Education 10 here, coming at you guys with another video. I want to ask you guys to please continue to check my channel, subscribe for more videos. And if you like what I say, please comment in the description below. So now, Game 3 for the Yankees and the Red Sox will be tonight for the ALDS. Yankees did what they needed to do at Fenway, and that was take one game. Could have been nice if they went up 2-0. I thought really they had a good chance to do it. But a split is a split. You take it. And now the Yankees have two in a row at the Yankee Stadium beginning with tonight. Now tonight's matchup was supposed to be Rick Porcello against Luis Severino. But the Red Sox made a little change and they're starting Nathan Ovaldi instead of Porcello. So they're going to push Porcello to game four against CC Sabathia. Sort of can understand where that move came from. Porcello did pitch game one out of the pen. Kind of a little curious, though, why they pushed him back. They did have a day off kind of in between, so it's a little bit interesting. But so far, if you haven't been watching the series up to this point, I know it's only two games in, the Yankee bullpen has outperformed the Red Sox pen. Red Sox pen's been very shaky. Yankees, if they really had just gotten a hit, they could have jumped on it all over it in Game 1. They jumped on the pen in Game 2 with Gary Sanchez. But you're seeing how the Red Sox have had to use up a lot of their pen already, and a lot of their arms are getting burned out, because their starters can't give them enough length. They got 5 and a third out of Sale, but Sale's hurt. He's not 100% healthy, so you're playing with an injured Sale, so he can't go deep into a game. You're playing with an injured... You're playing with... You know, you played with a David Price at the Fenway Park, and he got lit up. The Yankees have always hit well against Price. And now you have Avaldi. The Yankees, if he if they're able to get to Avaldi, this could be big trouble for Boston. If you're the Yankees, you got to love where they're going right now. You have to love the way that Aaron Judge has played. He has just been an absolute monster in this year's postseason. Compared to a year ago, it's astounding how much better Judge got seeing the ball better, just hitting the ball out of the park, and just the approach that he has at the plate, it's just tremendous to see. Gary Sanchez, you wonder if Game 2 might have now, might only not have been his coming out just there, but could this get him going the rest of the playoffs? Uh, of late, Gary has been heating up, which is a good sign to see. So you kind of wonder now if he's recovered from the small injuries he had this year, and maybe that was holding him back a little bit. It's hard to say, but as they say in baseball, if you had a bad year, it doesn't matter what you did in September. It's what you do in October. And if Gary Sanchez can get things going, you got to love where the Yanks will be heading if Gary gets his bat going again. And if he plays well behind the plate, which up to really for the most part now, he's played okay behind the plate. We haven't had any... He hasn't had pass balls with runners on base. He's kept that to a minimum. So you have to like the way up to this point, the way Gary's played behind the plate and how he's called the game. He's done his job. He has to keep that up for the rest of the series. That's going to be the big uh, that's going to be the big knock that we have to see. We have to see him do it for a whole series. <clears throat> so now at Yankee Stadium, you have to wonder how will the Yankees come out in this game. Severino was coming off a very impressive wild card game. He shut down Oakland through four innings, struck out seven. And even though he didn't go five or six innings, like, you know, the Yankees were playing an all hands on deck game in the wild card. But <clears throat> an encouraging sign, Severino looked as good as he looked in the first half. What I saw in the Oakland game was the old Severino. The guy that attacked hitters, blew them away with his high cheese. He wasn't afraid to challenge hitters. That was Severino when he was on. So now you wonder if we'll get that Severino for the rest of the playoffs, and I'm really hoping so. If Severino can do what he did in the wild card game, and you know maybe if he can go a few more innings than he did last time, you like the Yankees' chances in Game 3, if he's on. 
Ovaldi's another tough opponent the Yankees have to deal with. He, you know, he's been in the American League East for a long time. Played for the Yankees. Played for the Rays this year. Now playing for Boston. Can throw 100 plus miles an hour. He has a very good fastball. He's added some breaking stuff to his repertoire. So the Yankees are going to have to be patient and hit Ivaldi when you have a mistake. Now, Ivaldi, for all the great stuff he does with how hard he throws, he never was really a strikeout guy. You know, it's kind of weird. You're a guy that throws hard, but you haven't been able to get consistently strikeouts. So if the Yankees can hit a mistake on his on any of his straight fastballs, they have a really, really strong chance to take Game 3 and knock him out of the game early. Yankees will possibly be getting Aaron Hicks back tonight, which is pretty big. Uh, Hicks is a very important part of their lineup. Can play the outfield extremely well, can cover a lot of ground. Not that the Yankees had to worry about it in Game 2. Brett Gardner admirably filled in fine for him, so I'm curious kind of where the Yankees will go. I'm, I'm curious if they'll just send Hicks back out there. He is still recovering from the hamstring, so you have to be a little careful. Maybe could see a maybe pinch hit, maybe. I don't know. But the Yankees at least have depth at their disposal, something Boston doesn't quite have. They had to send Steven right off their roster and put in Heath Henry because of an injury. Their starting pitching has been shaky. Their bullpen getting the Kimbrel has been shaky. And the Yankees have done an okay job of attacking their lineup. They've done pretty good at making sure that Boston's lineup doesn't hurt them yet. You still got to be careful. J.D. Martinez is a very big threat. Mookie Betts is Mookie Betts. Benintendi's Benintendi. And I could just go on and on. The Red Sox lineup is very dangerous. And Severino will have to really attack the lineup differently each time. How deep Severino's going to go will be a very interesting question. I'm, I'm thinking Boone will just keep doing the same formula. Have Severino go maybe four or five innings. You, have, you are coming off the day off, so that could help. And you just go to the pen from there. And right now, Dylan Batanzas, last couple games, has shown he can pitch two innings in relief and not have an issue. You have Britton to set up in the eighth, and then you have Chapman. And Chapman looks pretty good. Chapman, I'll, you know, was worried what he was going to look like, but Chapman, Chapman is starting to get back to the old Chapman again. So that'll be good if you have him back and, and ready and healthy and you know, back to the old to the old Chapman that he used to be. So how the Yankees now will do in the rest of this series will depend on Game 3. It's now a best of three. And the Yankees don't want to go back to Fenway. They want to take this tonight. They want to take this tomorrow night and go to the ALCS. Game 4 will be Sabathia and Rick Porcello. This will be Sabathia's first appearance in this year's playoffs. So I'm curious... The Yankees will have to, if they can go up 2-1, you know, Sabathia, you'll see what you get out of him. And worst case scenario, if the series has to go back to Fenway, the Yankees will have Happ ready to pitch Game 5. We'll see what happens. Hopefully the Yankees don't have to ever see a Game 5. Hopefully they can win tonight, win tomorrow's Game in 4, and be ready to move on to the next round. Bronx will be going crazy. Yankee Stadium will be electric. The crowd is going to be insane. Can the Yankees win the games in the Bronx? We'll see what happens. Education 10. John Pariente. Saying bye for now.